The Krakoan era has felt like something completely different, and although, yes, we have seen the mutants come together on an island before, this felt very different in the sense that it wasn't just a bunch of like-minded, heroic, or villainous mutants on an island. This was a nation that involved almost all mutants, heroic and villainous, together. This wasn't mutants running away to an island, this was mutants proudly involving themselves in global politics and declaring themselves as a nation. Seeing mutants come together in this way, well, it just isn't something we've ever really seen happen before. At least, not on this scale. Considering how big and grand this overall story has been, and how great the changes we've seen for mutants in regards to them restoring their numbers and repopulating the Earth has been, it is going to feel very, very weird to go back to school at some point after this, even though I know we have to. But at the end of the day, this is comics, so there will come in time when the toys will have to all be put back on the shelf, and will inevitably have to return to the X-Men status quo. How do we go back after this? Welcome back, Nerd Squad. It's me, Amanda McKnight, aka VampX13, but you can call me Vampy. As we reflect on all of the massive changes of the Krakoan era, I would love to hear about some of your favorite moments so far, some of the ones you thought were the worst, and finally, how you think we'll all end up back at school somehow. When it comes to what the mutants have been up to here that has put the Krakoan era in a whole other league of X-Men history, we aren't just talking about posturing or politics. We are also talking about straight up advancement. The Krakoan era also saw the introduction of amazing mutant-based medicines, which Krakoa used to earn recognition with other nations, striking up bargains for life-saving medicines in exchange for acknowledgement of their nation. They also established resurrection protocols, finally figuring out how to lift literally return fallen mutants back to life through a combination of psychic consciousness backups through Cerebro and clone bodies, using the gifts of five very special mutants known collectively just simply as the five. Hope Summers, Egg, Proteus, Tempest, and Elixir. And with the help of Scarlet Witch, mutants also gained access to the minds of those they didn't have backups of, allowing them to bring back any mutant who had ever died. Krakoa being established as a mutant nation with technical, medical, and spiritual advancements isn't all that we saw during this era, though. There were also a bunch of storylines and events which shook up the established mutant history, expanding it outward, and also changed the origins of some characters. In most instances, I would say, for the better. It all began with us reframing the history of the X-Men with the eye-opening House of X Powers of Ten series. These two back and forth alternating series didn't really change the history of X-Men, but simply instead provided added context. The story suggested that everything we had known about the X-Men and some additional timelines as well existed through multiple continuities, which were all created by the death and birth of Moira McTaggart, who herself was retconned into being a mutant whose mutant powers were Resurrection. After death, Moira would simply be reborn again with the memories of her previous life, or lives, intact from birth. Her life was also tied to reality, so when she died, it was implied that reality or timeline that she was in would be ended. This allowed us to make sense of all of the eras of X-Men past, allowing them to all exist simultaneously, but also, you know, make sense of the fact that they existed way back in the 60s. <laughs> From there, the Krakoan era got a little weird, and I know that's saying something considering how weird that just sounded, but even when it got weird and kind of goofy, it wasn't all fun and games. And despite some of the fights we saw during the Otherworld Tournament in Ten of Swords, the implication of the battle was still huge for mutant history. Krakoa was forced to face off in a contest of champions against Arak the other half of the island of Krakoa, which, when joined, were actually both known together as Okara. This fight would determine whether or not the mutants of Earth were conquered by the hardened mutants of Arako, who had been trapped within the other world, besieged for years by demons who would eventually overrun them, who were known as the Amenthi. Or the event. This expanded what we knew of mutant history on Earth, and also what we knew of villains like Apocalypse, as we learned that he actually had a wife and children on Arako, which he left behind as he sought to find help for his people on Earth, which is why they split up and why he wasn't there. As was briefly touched on before we also opened up the resurrection protocols to not just mutants whose consciousness backup Cerebro had stored, this all went down in the trial of Magneto, where it was established that chaos magic was indeed real and was believed to be one of, if not the oldest, form of magic. Neither destructive nor constructive inherently. Wanda gained more mastery over her chaos magic, and the Eldritch Orchard was also established, which allows the mutants
mutants access to the minds of basically all mutants who have ever been lost. This bit of added story wasn't just important for healing the bonds between once father and daughter duo Magneto and Scarlet Witch, but also gave Wanda a power boost, a massive power boost, and saw her accepted by the mutants for the first time since the devastating events of House of M. Finally, some healing and some long desired justice for Wanda, rightly deserved. Now before I touch on the changes that spun out of the Inferno event, I would also like to mention that the Inferno event was actually meant to be kind of the beginning of the end of this era, as was originally planned out by the head of the X-Desk at the time, Jonathan Hickman. The plans Hickman had are not fully known to us, but it was recently touched upon that apparently the true villain of the Krakoan era that he was building up to having revealed was Cypher, who all along had apparently been plotting with Warlock to convert and conquer the mutant for the technarchy, if you can believe that. I can believe it, there were some pretty creepy panels with both of them early on, and now I'm like, well that makes sense. There was a lot that didn't happen though, because the rest of the creative team wanted to extend the Krakoan era and tell more stories in it before it ended, including a discarded Rogue series I would have really loved to read. I'm sure that Hickman was going to write, alas, it did not happen. Ultimately, Hickman decided that this story was no longer his alone, and he decided to take a step back and just let his other creatives continue without him, stepping down from his position as head of X. Very sad, but also really awesome that Jonathan Hickman trusted his other creators, his other writers and artists enough to just take it over. Instead, the story did continue with Inferno, which was different, I'm sure, than what Hickman had planned. This time around, Inferno was not focused on the uprising of Madeline Pryor, who during the previous Inferno event had attempted to get revenge on the X-Men and conquer New York with demons from Limbo. Instead, Moira McTaggart was revealed to be the villain who had really been working undercover for Orcus this whole time and was never truly an ally to the mutants. What? She instead had plotted to give the mutants Krakoa as kind of a last hurrah, lull them into a false sense of security while she destroyed them from the inside out, with all of her previous resurrections having warped her mind so that she indeed still hated all of mutants, as was alluded to in her origins during one of her earlier timelines. Speaking of timelines, we went all over the place with the next mutant-based story slash event, 10 lives and X deaths of Wolverine were two miniseries that went all over the place through Logan's various lives and the deaths that surrounded him. This all happened as Wolverine fought to save Professor X's life before he founded the X-Men, which of course would have altered the course of history. I mean, is it really even an X-Men era if we don't have some crazy time travel stories? It is definitely not. Not only does Wolverine have to confront a lot of his past in this event, but it also serves to lead us towards what would appear to be an inevitable downfall for Krakoa in terms of of Moira's involvement in this event. During the Krakoan era, the X-Men were also pulled into the major event, AXE, or Axe, or more specifically, Avengers vs. X-Men vs. Eternals, AXE. In this massive crossover event, the three groups were pulled into a fight against one another, with the Eternals' new Prime Eternal, Druig, declaring mutants deviants, making them their enemies. In addition, the Avengers were also not vibing as well with the mutants after learning that, you know, they had hidden the secret of resurrection from the world, and of course, after the events of Planet Size X-Men as well, where the mutants essentially uh, conquered Mars, terraforming it and then just kind of claiming it for themselves. Tensions were high between all three groups, and a Celestial was rebuilt and resurrected by a combined effort of members of the Eternals Heroes Group, the Avengers, and the mutants in the hopes of resolving the issue with the Eternals' war on mutant kind. They're kind of like, if we build a Celestial and we program it, the Celestial will just be like, stop that, and then it'll all work out. However, this backfired and only led to the whole Earth being judged by the Celestial on whether or not it should be allowed to live or die, meaning that the Eternals, Avengers, and X-Men would now actually have to team up to find a way to defeat the Celestial that they had created, known as the Progenitor. They succeeded, and while the Eternals were forever changed by the event, the X-Men mainly had some issues to deal with individually, with some of them left reeling from the effects of being judged or being skipped over by the progenitor. Also, the mutants decided to open up their gift of resurrection to the world as a result of this event. A lot of people died and they were like, I feel like it's the least we could do. Try to help the world now that everyone knows that 
we have that power. Sins of Sinister is the event I'm probably the least familiar with myself, but in essence, it explored an alternate reality where Mr. Sinister succeeded in destroying Krakoa and taking control of the fate of mutants and kind of the fate of the world, the universe. Through the event, we further delved into the origins of Nathaniel Essex, who it turned out wasn't exactly just Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister was instead one of the four clones that he'd created to carry out his work, with each possessing a different approach to uncovering the secrets of evolution. We'd also learn of a dark future where Mr. Sinister was in essence beaten out by perhaps another of his clones that is coming our way, who achieved dominion despite everything he did to gain control during Sins of Sinister, further building on what could be coming with Fall of X. I mean, it's pretty crazy when Sinister arranged all of that to happen and then someone still beat him to Dominion. That's crazy. Sinister himself would be condemned to the pit as a result of his meddling once the main continuity had been restored. This also is unfortunate, considering he actually could be quite useful during the fall of X. Although on the other hand, Sinister, despite being locked away, seems to have left a piece of him inside Xavier still, and is helping to guide him on a path to not only save mutant kind, but potentially all of existence, if that really is Sinister. I think it is, but who knows. The Hellfire Galas have been an important series of events that have happened yearly with the Krakoan era, and I'll also be really sad to see them go, as they were sort of built-in times of celebration for readers. I got dressed up when I read them, and I felt like I was partying alongside some of my favorite characters in the comics. The first event saw the X-Men team officially return to Krakoa and Mars terraformed and rebranded as Planet Araco. The second saw the secret of mutant resurrection revealed to the world, and the third saw Krakoa brutally attacked with all mutants, or almost all mutants anyway, being forced to leave Earth. Each one has been exciting, and the fact that I also missed the seemingly final real world in-person Hellfire Gala celebrated at SDCC <sighs> It's kind of heartbreaking. We've never had a mutant party like this in the comics, not at this scale and not as widely celebrated and not in a way that just bleeds into the real world, I don't think, like how the Hellfire Gala did. The Hellfire Gala might be the thing that I'll actually miss most from this era. As Krakoa was destroyed, most mutants were forced to leave Earth by Orcus. These are the few mutants who were trained to resist using the Red Triangle Protocol. And those few managed to fight back and remain on Earth. Among them is Night Crawler, who is also kind of a version of Spider-Man right now, and recently had his origins retconned somewhat in X-Men Blue, so that Chris Claremont's initial intended origin, with him being the son of both Destiny and Mystique, could be made true. Although, don't worry, if you're still an Azazel fan, Azazel is still Nightcrawler's dad as well. Now Nightcrawler has two moms and a dad bonus. From here, the mutants have a lot on their plate. There are only a few of them left on Earth who have survived all of this, and many of them are pretty scattered, to be honest. And the question remains of how they will save the day, how or if all of the mutants who left Earth can be returned and saved, and what will happen next with the fall of the House of X and the rise of the powers of Ten. It's also interesting that as one falls, the other is going to rise. What does that mean? And when all is said and done, how do we just all go back to school? I'm not ready.